morning, good day, or good evening, depending on which part of the world you're from and the time you are listening to this. Welcome to Peace in a Pod. My name is Angelina Nangwepe and I am your host for this segment where we'll be talking about the implications of urban policies in the urban terrain. Um, in today's podcast, we'll be having our two special guests, um, Jeffrey Mutiba and Snintemba Sani. Jeffrey Mudiba is a candidate town planner by SAC Plan. He's currently an intern assisting with sustainable human settlement um, planning and projects. He is passionate about this, about sustainability and climate. And as for Usne Tembasani, is currently enrolled in urban and regional planning at the University of Witwatersrand. She's interested in the technical approach of urban planning, urban planning such as geo information systems and des- and urban design. Okay. Um, welcome, Snetemba, and welcome, Jeffrey Mudiba. So today we'll be discussing the small micro enterprises, um, policymakers, and AI in integrating them all together, and how we can accommodate such ideas in urban planning and other collaborative um, stakeholders. So the first question that we'll be looking into is how can urban planning accommodate the infrastructure and needs of AI driven small enterprises, um, which could be such as computing um, resources and reliable internet connectivity. So how can we accommodate that? Thank you for having me, Angelina. I think this topic is really interesting because we are in the fourth industrial revolution whereby we we are forced to make use of you know new technologies and we are forced to uh, include them in most of the aspects of um even the careers and also our lives so in terms of um the ai and uh the the Company. I think what I've realized is that there is a need to include that because it makes the life easier and it can make like the jobs which will require more time and more energy for humans. So it makes it much easier. I've looked into the three printing. I have looked into the structure it has designed at UJ and it seems that it, it is like the direction that um, we can take in the built environment that okay if there is a machine that can make what humans will take hours to you know to build in few hours and using materials which are also eco-friendly then maybe this is something that we should consider, even uh, considering that we are not really a developed country. Um, Hi, and thank you for having me, Angie. Um, So for me, this whole AI business kind of confuses me. My understanding of AI would be like chat GPT, right? But me trying to contextualize this in urban planning, I would say, is it, well, I just want to ask first, would it be similar to um, the notion of like smart cities, basically, like is AI linked to that, firstly, just so I can get my grounding? Um, in my understanding, it is connected to smart cities. How do so you think the, about AI sorry. cities? So is the same, it's not so different because there's this thing where it seems like, so in planning, there's like whole smart city thing that links to sustainable development goals and all that, right? But it seems that this AI thing is treated as something different, which is why I get kind of confused if it's like part of the same thing or is this AI now a new other thing, avenue that we'll be exploring? Um, I wouldn't say it's really a new avenue. I think it's just an advanced avenue of what we've been doing. So it's okay. like an advancing technology that's coming in and that's like, oh, I have a better solution. I think I can do this faster than this, you know. As Jeffy mentioned, oh. like, assuming if you're going to have like a machine that's 3D printing buildings, 
within like two hours and it takes months for a project to happen, then obviously you'd move towards something that's like less time consuming. Mm -hmm. Um, financial, you know, financially um, feasible, such things. But now what are its implications? You know, when we move into the smart cities and AI driven ideas, especially in South Africa's context of how Jeffrey said that we are not yet developed, but then we can still push the idea of it. How do we do it without um, fragmenting other groups, vulnerable, the most vulnerable groups in South Africa? Okay. Um, No, go ahead. If I can attempt to answer your question, Angie, I think, uh, and also to Sne, I think AI has a bad reputation because most people associate it with uh, taking jobs that humans are supposed to take, you know, especially in our, you know, contest in South Africa, which is not very developed. So they believe that women have to be doing those jobs. But I believe that uh, there there could be like negative implications and there could be positive implications. It's all about what does the AI, what is its function? What why is it gonna going to help us with? I think the last thing we will want as urban planners is to have uh, technologies which are going to think instead of us thinking. You know, they are supposed to help us make the you know maybe calculations which uh, otherwise are gonna take us more and more time to figure out. But in terms of strategic think, thinking, in terms of planning, I think uh, as qualified planners, we are the one who are supposed to do that. I was looking into the um, an AI um, system which is used to calculate, you know, when they have like a plot and then it calculates the parking, it can show the design, like an urban design of a, um, of, of the space, and then it also... Uh, calculate the number of units that you can get from it. And I felt threatened in the beginning that, okay, this could take jobs away from the planners, from urban designers, from architects. But at the same time, I thought, even though it can do all of these calculations, it will still need the qualified people to actually do more. Uh, You know, it's like adding more into it, like making it more functional for humans. So I think there could be a positive balance. And also the other thing I think we have to keep in mind or emphasize on is on the eco-friendly and sustainability. I mean, uh, we look into like different, different building technologies which will be able to be resistant against, you know, climate change, against all of the, you know, pressures from the nation of pressures. So I think if we can have those uh, kind of um, technologies which will be sustainable, I think they could be implemented, definitely. Um, Also, Angie, to go back to your first question, because you were asking about AI, the use of AI within small enterprises, I would think that it would be a beneficial thing because was I, I, yeah, I was scrolling through Instagram, I think, at some point, and I came across this video where they were showing this um, fully automated, uh, automated store where you walk in, you scan stuff, you walk out, you like basically you do your own thing. There's no cashier, there's no security and anything. It's just a store and like machines basically doing anything. And in that sense, I think it's very convenient, very efficient. However, I feel like with those things involving like AI and whatnot, it's all okay, like in places that are developed, in places that are way ahead of us um, in terms of development. However, I do question if there would be the answer for us right now in South Africa, particularly because we're also the most unequal country in the world with so many people still living um, in absolutely horrendous conditions. So in as much as it could be beneficial, even though we do implement it in South Africa, I feel that it will only benefit the few that can afford it. 
you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not going to put like a kiosk like that in the middle of like Alexandria. You get what I'm saying? So I just wonder about the different context. Okay, I agree with you, Snetemba, with the idea of AI maybe being only beneficial to the small group and actually not being beneficial to the number of the greatest, you know. Um, but then it comes with the idea that if we are afraid of moving into the AI world because of our contextual um displacement, like our inequalities and um, I don't know, the fragmentation, the special fragmentation that's happening, um, that, and it continues to happen with classes and, and everything. Though, if we have like townships that are running like small businesses and that are going to be integrated with AI driven like internet connectivity that runs 24 hours with someone that is meeting at home could actually advertise their business on social medias like TikTok, Instagram, and sell worldwide their product, don't you think that's beneficial to someone who's at the peripherals of the TT? Yeah, I can see the benefits and I'm not saying that we shouldn't introduce AI at all. However, I do not imagine the process being easy because people have been asking for housing, for water, electricity, sanitation, all of that. And instead of addressing those issues, along with the AI, I feel like, I mean, sorry, instead of instead of addressing those issues, you introduce the AI. I feel like people might have a bit of a conflict with it. So I think at best, we can try find a way to introduce AI while um solving the the issues that already exist in South Africa. That's what I'm saying. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sorry. Oh yes, I do understand what she's saying. And to come back to you, Jeffrey, about um AI having eco friendly material and how it answers to climate change. I think that's very beneficial to us as much as we're driven by the idea of sustainable development goals. And, and, and how we always, you know, how our policies such as the SDF would have like an approach of like sustainable development approach whereby they would have your, for example, you would have your SDG one. And now the question is, as much as we're saying that AI can provide eco-friendly material, how does AI get to know that this is actually beneficial to this certain area. This does not actually affect the certain area. You know, the certain material wouldn't have such a negative impact in the long run. How does how do we keep AI involved and in ensuring that it has long it, it has ideals of long term effect? I understand your question, Angelina. I think it also goes back to what Sne said about um, if our country is actually ready for it. And I think that's the reality. I think most of the time we don't want to face the reality and we want to work with what will make, you know, everything easier or what will make uh, lives more sustainable, how are we go- going to even be reaching the, um, the goals, the st- sustainable development goals, how are we going to be reaching them while we are very much behind in terms of poverty, in terms of um, uh, employment and many other things. I think what I will say about that is that um, I agree 100% that the, we, couldn't, we might not be ready for it, but at the same time, we shouldn't shy away from it because all of the issues that were mentioned, I think they do not really interface with the development of new technologies. It does not necessarily, it's either like if, if you were to focus on one and leave the other one out, it will still not make a lot of difference because 
we have been stuck in like a, you know, a lack of progress in terms of technological advancement. And then this goes to the point of like it being possibly exclusive. But from my view, I think I like to look at it in a small scale in terms of, um, if you can make a change in a specific place and it doesn't have to be expensive. I think we have to consider that AI does not necessarily mean expensive. You know, I understand that machines that could be used to build, you know, the um, houses like 3D printings are usually very costly. But then in the long run, I think we have to think about it in the long term basis as planners in imagining the futures of our countries and of our continent or the cities. So in the long run, we have to understand that even though it could cost a lot now to build or to use those um, AI uh, systems or machines, in the long run, if they are sustainable, if they are resistant, then we are going to be having more benefits. Unlike now when we still have to use brick and mortars and slow systems or working on a project which takes years or not considering the environmental impacts, floodlines, we, 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 whereby the systems are not updated to tell us where the floodlines are. But if there are machines which will actually work with the developers and with the residents or communities about, okay, what the number of people, what, what, what are the, the demographics there? And then the system is able to run easier and then people are a, a able to access the information easier and build on that information, which will be more accurate than the information that any human can produce. Then we are going to be beginning, uh, working on a, on something that will benefit everyone even in long, in the long term. So we have to look at those small scale, um, Kind, 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 kind of impacts that the AI can come with. Yes, I'm I not def- sure if I answered your question, uh, Angie, and Sina, you may continue. Yeah, I was about to say I definitely agree with what you're saying, in as much as AI has a negative, bad connotation um, attached to it. I feel that it won't benefit South Africa to shy away from the this new technology just because we not even, you know, like a developed country. Um, and if anything, if we just focus on finding ways to make it work for us, it could really be a great investment and could actually solve the issues that we've been having in South Africa way faster um, than we, are, we would have thought. And obviously, we would definitely have to get a, a better government, a government that respects the relationship between itself and its citizens, the way there's no corruption, where crime is, uh, you know, low, and all those other factors that would uh, basically make it possible to have the best results possible with the use of AI in terms of addressing issues of the country. Oh, thank you. Oh, Jeffy, you may go ahead. Okay, this makes me want to ask, or yeah, to ask if we, if it could, if if it could help us think of uh, cost-effective, you know, new technologies for building that doesn't necessarily have to be very expensive, but can be, you know, sustainable, and it could be, you know, building up, looking into the lack of land in the inner city, especially at the core areas or at the corridors. So I think that's are some of the things as planners we have to think about in terms of, okay, how can we use it to accommodate the informal science settlements, residents, and uh, to for our advantage. I think the most important thing when it comes to AI is to use it for our advantage, is to make an impact, not to use it to benefit the few. I agree with what you just said because in one of the questions actually it was how do we promote, um, how do we as planners promote inclusivity and diversity um, with AI focused businesses as clusters? So basically 
I would like to take it back to home-based businesses. Um, that's because my interest with home-based businesses is that how can we promote them to run on technology? Whether I'm selling a gota and I know how many customers have ordered to pay, then can, that can get me prepared as a seller, you know. So my my chat with I with AI is that how how do I include it in policy? How do I say okay, my SDF will promote um, home based businesses or small micro enterprises through the use of AI, which in my context would be providing Wi-Fi, providing card machines, providing access to internet cafes that are very close by that um, that are very reliable also. You know, how does the government bring incentives that actually say yes to small businesses, yes to township businesses or informal businesses and promote that? Because what we notice is that there's actually an increase in informality, right? Um, and the increase in informality, that's because of how the formal cooperation or the formal sector has decreased in the number of employing people. Um, so now how do we promote what we consider of informal because of capitalism, terminology, and ideologies? So how do we promote that through using AI? Okay, uh, this question, okay, you may attempt first. Um, oh, now I lost my train of thought. You can go. Oh, okay. So this question, I think, is it's not very easy to answer, but I could try to answer it like this. I I worked on the bylaw uh, comments for the city of Dubai outdoor advertising, and they were just also trying to uh, include new technologies like uh, we have a LED. Advertisements, they don't necessarily have to be just billboard. They could have like digitalized uh, billboard. We could have like, um, you know, more and more things are getting digitalized. And uh, I think what we have to think about is not necessarily for the businesses only, but for the impacts they have on people. You know, how do they create safety? How do they improve the economy of the township? How do you make the township's businesses to make use of those technologies to advance themselves or to, in terms of advertisement, to advertise themselves? How are you going to charge the same rate for people advertising in the township as you charge at the suburbs or at the inner cities? You know, I think those are some of the things that we have to consider and also something as simple as the street vendors in the townships and also you know in the informal settlements for example how do you try to get them to you know be integrated into those systems how do they know which spot is most suitable how do they make space to be safer, you know, using those kind of technologies, because I think the main purpose is that we can try to think about in terms of the small scale businesses and you know, the street vendors and AI is how can they use it for their advantage. I think that's the main thing about AI is how does it make life easier? How does it make the cost less? How you know, is it benefiting the community? But I do not have the correct or the yeah the right answer as to how that could be achieved. I'm sorry, Angie. Can you please repeat the question? I kind of lost the question there. So the question was, how do we incorporate the informal? businesses in policy making and including AI. So how do we connect all these three sectors together or concepts together? Uh, well, firstly, 
I would say that the government would need to stop viewing um, informality as something to clean up, something to fix, and accept it as something that occurs in the everyday life of South African citizens and find ways to um, incorporate it or work with it to better South Africa because um, if I'm not mistaken, it does make majority um, make majority of like businesses and whatnot. They have a huge contribution towards um, the country and the GDP and whatnot. So maybe the government could have like initiatives and programs to, um, well, firstly, make people more aware of um, government processes and what takes place, and secondly. So that, like, to facilitate the dialogue between, like, government trying to accept the best way to formalize informality, if that makes sense, so that, you know, street vendors can have, like, permits or, like, I don't know, so it's not treated like a a disease or something to be cut off once, you know, it's spread and whatnot. And I think that, uh, yeah, just making people more aware of of what happens around them because I feel like at the crux of this whole thing is the fact that the government and its people don't have a good relationship. The people don't trust the government because it's corrupt and whatnot, whatnot. So mending that relationship as best as we can through all sorts of media that is accessible for all races, ages and all of that um, would probably be the first step in trying to link informality businesses and yeah AI I think we need to create that trust I I agree I agree with you because I like also the fact that you speak about good governance that the core of this could be good governance you know whereby we have Um, We foster collaboration between different stakeholders. Okay, sorry about that, but yeah, as I was saying that we could collaborate like different stakeholders um, within within the whole process of policy making also and making sure that there are no gaps because also in my ideology, I think that um institutions or small organizations you know they somehow in some way um give ideas to policy makers on what to implement next what to do next how to move it next how to make it work you know so if policy is going to come back and create stricter or rigid um regulations that that actually provides a gap for the informal workers and the informal traders or entrepreneurs to actually continue with their businesses, to actually um, not abide to the regulations. And that's because of how regulations are not so flexible for our our small micro-business owners, our informal workers, our owners. But then also I'm glad... um, I was listening to this one of the podcasts whereby they spoke about the R204, which speaks to protecting informal workers um, in in our informal sector. So I guess we're getting somewhere with with incorporating the whole formal sector and informal sector. So yeah, with all that being said, my people, um, what else, like, what other points of views would you like to add um, on the whole idea of AI and policy? Okay, my last thought on this uh, AI and term planning, I think, is about how our policies have to 
uh, be forward in terms of thinking and in terms of planning, especially when it comes to developing planning. Uh, I think they have to be, uh, they have to consider all of the changes that could 